It is March 14th, 2022, and happy Pi Day. Well, maybe not that kind of pie. In this video, I'm going to give you four ways that you can use a Raspberry Pi. Let's get into it. If you don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, a Raspberry Pi is a tiny and affordable computer usually used to learn programming through some fun uh, projects as well. But it can also be used for some practical applications in your daily life. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. And in this video, I'm going to go over four ways you can use the Raspberry Pi. Now, this is going to be more of a summary video of these projects. Uh, but I have gone into two of these projects in uh, previous videos, so you can check out the videos here, but I will be doing future videos on the other two projects as well. So let's get into it right now. The first application is to make the Raspberry Pi a Homebridge server. Now Homebridge is a piece of software that allows you to make non-HomeKit compatible devices compatible with Apple's HomeKit. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, I always have, and most of us have Apple devices around the house, including iPhones, iPads, but we want a lot of the devices, a lot of your smart devices are not Apple HomeKit compatible. Usually they're Google or Amazon compatible, but this is a way to bring in all your devices that are compatible with Homebridge into Apple HomeKit. So this, is, this way you can bring all your devices into one different hub. So you don't have to download a piece of software here, download a piece of software there, and just control it by going to different apps. You can really control everything in one central place and then control it on your phone itself. Now I've done a full on tutorial a video on how to set this up. And I've really been using this on a daily basis. The nice thing is you can run this software on any version of Raspberry Pi with a network connection. So you can, of course, it runs really well on the Raspberry Pi 4, 3, but it even runs well on a Raspberry Pi Zero W, the W with the Wi-Fi connection. So I've been really using it on a daily basis. So another bonus and feature that Homebridge has is it does have an Amazon plugin. Now it doesn't mean that you can control all the devices that Amazon can automatically, actually the reverse. So although most devices, smart devices out there are Google and Amazon compatible, there are very few that are not. So for example, my Elgato key light here is not even HomeKit compatible, neither is it Amazon or Google compatible. So with the Amazon plugin on a Homebridge, now I can control my Elgato key light through my Amazon device. So let me give you an example. Turn off key light. And there you go, it turned it off. The next way you can use a Raspberry Pi is as a VPN server. Now, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. I have my VPN server down here running off my Raspberry Pi 3. It's connected to my network. And you do have to configure your router to route the VPN traffic to the Raspberry Pi. But once you have everything set up, you're able to browse the net from any open Wi-Fi network even very securely once you're connected to your VPN server. Now, when you're on an open network or open Wi-Fi network, such as a coffee shop, all that traffic is usually not encrypted. So someone who is on the same network, if they're doing something nefarious, they could really kind of try to analyze or capture some of those, that traffic that's going out. So they're trying to really capture some sensitive information. But using a VPN server allows you to have an encrypted, secure connection. And it's the traffic is routing through your home network. And really, that's a really safe way to kind of browse the net, even on an open network. Another benefit of using a VPN server is that you can make it look like you're browsing from your home network, even if you're not at home. Now, one reason to do this is some streaming services are locked in by geolocation. So they look at your IP address and they wanna make sure you're in, let's say the United States. If you're in another country, some of those services are not available to you, right? So I can be in another country connected, connected to my VPN service here at home in the United States, and I can still use some of those streaming services. Now, there are other reasons to do this. Maybe you don't want people to know where you're browsing from. Hope you're not doing anything nefarious, but this is another benefit for using a VPN server. But the biggest benefit for me and the one I use the most often is this allows me to be on my home network. Even if I'm not at home, 
that means I have access to all my resources that are on my network. So I do have a file server or a storage network attached storage uh, drive. So I can access all those files. And sometimes I need to get files off my computer here at home. A lot of times I'm at work and I just need to grab that file. So I can log into my VPN server and then go ahead and log into the different resources on my network here. The next thing you can do with the Raspberry Pi, and it's also related to networking, is you can use this as a travel wireless router. Now, why would you need a travel wireless router? Well, if you're like me and you are traveling or you're just going someplace, you're always bringing multiple devices. Now, when you get to a new place, it's kind of a pain to connect all these devices to the new Wi-Fi network. But if you connect all your devices to your travel wireless router beforehand, all you have to do is configure this guy to the new Wi-Fi network. And now every device is on the internet. Another benefit is there are some places, some older hotels that may not offer a Wi-Fi connection or a very weak Wi-Fi connection, in, but maybe they have an ethernet uh, connection in the room. So you just have to connect this to the ethernet jack. And then now you have your own personal Wi-Fi hotspot. Another benefit for using a travel router has to do with the built-in features with the routing software. Now, one of those features is the automatic connecting to a VPN server. Now, this means that all my devices, I don't have to configure all my devices with the VPN software and connect to the VPN server. All I have to do is connect this Raspberry Pi to my VPN server. And then everything that's connected to this Raspberry Pi is automatically connected to my VPN server. Now, there's some other built-in features such as ad blocking so you can block any content that's coming in and then also you can monitor some of the traffic going in and out you can ma manage the data usage kind of see that so if your travel router is connected to say your phone hotspot you can see how much data you're using uh, connected to that hotspot as well and the last benefit i'll mention is you might fall under not so everyday tech but you can use a Raspberry Pi not only as a travel router, but as a web server at the same time. Meaning I can connect this using my iPad, but still do all my programming connected to this and still be connected to the internet. But I'll do a future video on web development on iPad and Raspberry Pi. So watch out for that in the future. The last way I'll mention about using a Raspberry Pi is relates to a recent video I did on RetroPie but you can turn the Raspberry Pi into a retro gaming console uh, emulator. So you can emulate old machines such as Nintendo, Super Nintendo, uh, Commodore 64, Sega Genesis, and you can even emulate a Game Boy. This is one great way to kind of relive your childhood memories, uh, really a nostalgic type of way to go back there. Uh, but I've been playing Mike Tyson's Super Punch-Out, Street Fighter 2, uh, Paperboy, some old Nintendo games. Uh, so this is one fun way to use Raspberry Pi. One way I can see using this is let's say I have to go back to Taiwan and I have to quarantine for like a week or two. Uh, this is one great way to kind of kill time if you really need to and just kind of relive your childhood memories at the same time. So this is one fun way to use a Raspberry Pi. So these are just four ways to use a Raspberry Pi. There are thousands of projects out there for Raspberry Pi, but these are like some practical ways to use a Raspberry Pi that I use on a daily basis. Uh, three of them are very practical. One of them is fun, practical, depending on how you look at it. Now I've done videos on two of the ways, but I will do videos in the future on the other ways, including that extra one with using an iPad and a Raspberry Pi for web programming. So watch out for those videos in the near future. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, consider subscribing. Until the next one, see ya.